So guys, a lot of you all want to get into the finance service industries and the quickest way to get there is through pursuing your CFA. Now, the question that often arises is should we pair up our CFA qualification with an MBA qualification as well? Well, that is the question that I'm going to answer in today's video and hopefully you will have some sort of clarity about whether you should do CFA first, MBA first, both at the same time or should you even go for this option? Hi guys, I'm Rushal. I'm a part of the academics team at Zell Education. Guys, Zell has been training candidates for professional accounting and finance courses for the last seven years in which we've trained approximately 10,000 students for professional accounting and finance qualifications such as the ACCA course, the CFA course, CPA course, CMA course, Diploma and IFRS. Guys, we also work with a lot of different universities and corporates to provide various training programs to them. Guys, if this is the first time you're coming across our YouTube channel, uh, I'd request you to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell notification so you're up to date with everything happening in the accounting and finance domain. So guys, without wasting any further time, let's jump into today's topic, which is, is CFA and MBA a good qualification to have together? So guys, first let us understand if you should pursue CFA and then let us understand if you should pursue an MBA. So guys, essentially CFA will teach you everything you need to know about the various aspects of finance, alternative investments, quantitative methods, economics, everything you need to know, right? MBA is more of a general program where you learn about various business strategies, business management and things of that sort. My recommendation to you would be you start off with a CFA. A CFA level one on its own is good enough to get you an entry level job into the finance service industries. The best way to go about with this guys is first you complete your CFA at least levels one and two. You complete about two years of work experience before you get into an MBA college. Now guys, please understand that while the MBA is a very prestigious and a very important program for y'all, MBA from an Ivy League tier college would have a different sort of impact compared to normal MBA degree from a normal college. So when you're going for one of these top universities or top institutes that provide the MBA course, you know, there's a lot of applicants. There's about two to four lakh applicants from India a year and there's about 6,000 to 7,000 seats available in these top universities. So that's about a two to four percent chance of you making it in. So what you need to work on when you're pursuing your CFA is also strengthening your CV. In order to beat the competition, you need to be better than the competition. So ensure that you at least your CFA levels one and two before you go for this and you have some work experience on your CV alongside to ensure that you get into an MBA college. Now let's talk about what sort of value this will add to you. Now guys understand that the MBA is a generalist program whereas a CFA is a specialist program. What do I mean by this? You know, a product manager. Guys, now please understand that the role of a finance manager or product manager is a generalist role. Usually you need to apply a lot of strategy when it comes to these roles and MBA grads would be a perfect fit for this. However, CFA is a specialist program. Now, if you want to get into, let's say in finance, you want to get into alternative investments. You want to make your career in that then CFA will help you get there because it is a specialist program. So this is how I would differentiate the two courses. Guys, as in if, if you're a budding entrepreneur or if you want to be someone who is contributing more than just their financial knowledge is when you ne really need an MBA degree to learn those strategic ideas, to learn the business acumen. And that is where MBA from an Ivy League tier college or university will provide immense value to you. Now let's talk about the real benefits of doing an MBA after a CFA. Why do people do it? And why is there such a buzz around pursuing an MBA after CFA these days? Well, guys, the very first thing I want to talk about is the networking. So please understand that when you've completed your CFA, while you will get opportunities, if you want to get into, let's say, investment banking, you only get there if you have very, very strong connects. So when you go to a top university or an institute for MBA, you will meet like-minded people. You will build a very strong network through which you will generate opportunities for yourself. So networking is one of the key reasons why you need to do an MBA after a CFA. The second bit I want to talk about is credibility that comes with having done a CFA and an MBA. Now, if on your CV you are showing key, okay, I've done one or two or even all three levels of CFA, and I've completed my MBA from a top, top university. 
it shows real business and strategic acumen you know interviewers will not really question your credibility after that it's just a matter of finding the right fit for you so the credibility that comes along with pursuing the cfa and then an mba is you know one that a lot of candidates crave all right the third point i want to talk about is the diverse roles that you get as a cfa and an mba now if you're a cfa you might just be limited to certain roles and vice versa with mba if you do your mba you might be limited to certain roles but having done both opens different opportunities for you all so you all can expect a lot of diverse role given the point that i talked about previously your credibility and your acumen guys and the final and the most important point i want to talk about is the placement opportunities that an ivy league you know institute can give you when you've completed your cfa guys you will obviously get a lot of opportunities to work in the industry however completing your mba from a top university or an institute is very important because that will help you get placed the top top companies of this world right the consulting the massive consulting firms and you know your big fours they all prefer hiring from these top institutes which is why mba will give you and mba from a top institute will give you great placement opportunities and your package will be greater than your peers okay guys that brings me to the final point of today's video which is what is the average salary that you would get So if you are someone who's just completed CFA level 1 you can expect a package of between 5 to 6 lakhs in an entry level job if you've completed level 2 you can expect this to shoot up to about 10 lakhs as your package and if you've completed all three levels then your package will be around 15 to 20 lakhs now pair this with an MBA from a reputed institute and this further shoots up to 25 to 30 lakhs per annum of course not everyone could get the same package but you know it takes special talent to clear all three levels of cfa and then get into a top institute for mba and clear that which is why these are some of the most well paid uh, individuals in the industry guys if you found today's video helpful please consider liking sharing subscribing uh, leave your opinions in the comments below about what you think would be the right fit for a cfa candidate what specialization should you go for when it comes to an mba also any questions any suggestions please leave for us in the comments below uh, the number to reach us is in the description box below so you can reach us and we'll be more than happy to help you guys just a reminder for you to please hit the bell icon that will keep you up to date with everything happening in the world of accounting and finance we put a lot of effort to bring to you videos that are extremely relevant in today's market thanks for watching